Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning so we have been talking about the inception of uh, Hindi films. We have been also talking about uh, the great history of our Indian cinema with particular reference to Hindi cinema. Now, um, some of the films that we talked about were, uh, uh, you know, film uh, cinema when it started, when it was um, at its earliest stages, at its beginning. And uh, we have been talking about uh, silent films such as uh, um, the very first film that was made in India, that is Raja Harish Chandra uh, by Dada Saha Falke. Then we have been talking about the first talkie films, uh, film that was Alamara. And we also talked about um, a series of other films that have become uh, like historical landmarks in our uh, great cultural heritage films such as Devdas, Alam Ara and uh, Achut Kanya, many others like that. So, these are the films that have informed and shaped our cinema. Now, uh, what do you understand when I say uh, uh, something like these films, these early films have informed our cultural heritage, our uh, subsequent cinema or our popular imagination. What I meant is that these films created a sort of template for, uh, you know, it won't be very far-fetched to say to, that these films created the kind of cinema that we were going to have. So, of course, we were talking about love stories and the predominance of the musical in our uh, cinema, which still exists today. I mean, some of the greatest hits uh, in recent times particularly are musical love stories. So, the template has been set at the outset. Now, um, another uh, important factor is the, that uh, these films also told us how to view, and this is important and I want to, you to pay attention to this, that how to view, how to view our men and women, okay, through the lens of cinema. So, an idealized hero an ide was also an idealized, an ideal man an idealized heroine was also an ideal woman. So, this is, these are, and this is the way cinema creates certain kinds of stereotypes and that has remained. Okay. We want a woman or a man to be of certain kind because that is what history teaches us and also cinema teaches us. And what is cinema? But after all, it is a reworking, reinterpretation of our cultural tropes. And uh, our perceptions are influenced by the way actors and actresses behave and are represented on screen. So, this is important to understand that representations shape our perspectives of how we view relationships, gender and attitudes. So, these are, so these early films sort of shaped the way it, our world view was formed. Uh, unfortunately, several of these films, particularly um, Alamara and Achut Kanya, they do not really uh, exist the, in the way they should have been. So, they have been uh, more or less destroyed. There is a, a place called NFAI in Pune that uh, that is a uh, uh, National Film Archives of India. So, um, due to uh, perhaps uh, some accidents or uh, perhaps these films are very uh, expensive to maintain, we have lost a very important part of very important aspect of our cultural heritage and uh, of course, we mourn the loss of these films in their original state. So, um, from those early films, now let us move on to um, one of the key films that uh, has come to shape uh, what we call the modernity 
okay so modernity in hindi cinema and how it all begin um, well this is this movie can be called at the center of the canon so i am talking about avara which was released in 1951 one of the most premier indian films that found global acceptance the film was produced and directed by raj kapoor and was written by khwaja ahmed abbas k a abbas the great a uh, socialist writer so the theme or the story deals with the idea of nature versus nurture and this is a, again a recurring pattern in most hindi films nature versus nurture it questions the premise that the son of a criminal would be criminal by nature and vice versa now it is important to understand that this film was made at the peak of nehruvian socialism so it is struck a chord with the model of a nehruvian socialism that was at the core of our nationalistic ideology at that time and then we have to also understand that uh, the film was extremely popular because of its ideology um, in russia um, and in uh, turkey the film was remade as uh, with the title avare raj kapoor patented the chaplinist character with this film you know the lovable tramp the lovable vagabond the innocent tramp now avara is known for its music also there is a, a grand set piece of a, a dream sequence which i urge you to watch and perhaps you know that's something that must have been extremely important at that time technically and uh, um, a very significant contribution the film today of course is remembered for the great chemistry between raj kapoor and nargis its song its musical sequences a story of class differences interestingly uh, a very young shashi kapoor played the part of uh, the little boy who grows up in uh, to become raj kapoor and raj kapoor's father the on screen father was played by his real father shashi uh, sorry the great prithvi raj kapoor so three generations of kapoors in one film um raj kapoor's uh, brand of innocent tramp or vagabond persona was further developed in shri 400 base um or mr 420 uh, now you must remember that uh, it's one of the greatest emblematic shots ever when uh, raju who is at the crossroads and he is a country boy moving towards bombay and he comes across this milestone um bombay 420 miles so this means that the template is or the stage is set that we are looking at uh, the dichotomy the binary between the country life which is innocent symbolized by people like raju and the city life which is corrupt and fraud that is 420 yeah indian penal code gives us this um, section 420 which uh, suggests fraud and cheat so this is bombay for you so this he is a country boy traveling to bombay in um, in search of a living and uh, uh, he comes in uh, contact with uh, the pure innocent heroine um, very suggestively titled vidya that is nargis's character uh, she is a school teacher so again we are talking about an idealized character you know she is vidya her name suggests learning okay education guidance and um, she runs a small school and where she is molding the young children so again the idea that children are the future of the future citizens of india and uh, this is how a good girl should be like um, but uh, raju is not after a simple life he is soon seduced by the excesses of city life and uh, the character who lures him away from vidya played by nadira is uh, again very significantly called maya that is wealth or illusion so vidya versus maya so again we are talking about the binary tropes this has always been a key feature of uh, you know cinema we have been talking about the language of cinema and here we are talking about symbolism so we you know one character symbolizes everything that is good 
and another character represents everything that is bad. So, the good versus bad and then you should also, you may also um, want to recall F. W. Marno sunrise at this point. Again, the same idea is created, good versus evil. So, good country life um, represented by good people, good wife and the bad country, but the bad city girl, the bad life, the corrupt life of city as represented by mm, um, the farm fatal. So, here too Maya is nothing other than or more than a farm fatal. And then you remember her slinky gowns, her uh, long cigarette holder, her hairdo, her makeup, everything is over the top. And, uh, um, Again, the film then becomes Raju's struggle to completely succumb to a wealthy lifestyle earned by dishonesty and his desire to save his integrity. At the end, of course, he is saved by Vidya and they live happily ever after a life full of morals and integrity. So, that is the story of this immensely popular film and uh, we all know that the film, the, the popularity of the film was not just restricted to India, but also many of these um, Asian countries as well as in Russia and uh, the song Mera Juta Hai Japani of course, does not need any introduction. So, here is a clipping where I would like you to watch a memorable scene from Sri Charso Base. Another great film that um, has ca uh, captured the attention of the world was Mother India. Now, the title of the film was taken as a counterpoint to American author Catherine Mayo's book Mother India, where India or Indian culture and religion and heritage are sort of vilified. That is what most people felt. So, many people were offended by the representation of India. Now, this film, uh, this epic film directed and produced by Mehboob Khan, shot in his great Mehboob studio, was a remake of the director's earlier film, Aurat, which was a 1940 movie. The Mother India is a story of a village woman named Radha, played by Nargis, who tills her farm and once her husband, who is uh, who loses both his arms in an accident. Um, he abandons the family and walks away and then we do not see him anymore. Okay. Just like the movie we have been talking about Divar. Okay. So, the father shamed uh, and uh, uh, unable to look after his family, he just takes the easy way out of abandoning the family and it is left to the mother to raise her family and also uh, her struggle to uh, cultivate the land, feed her children and also survive the machinations of the evil money lender as played by Kanahiya Lal. Now, symbolically the film represents India as a nation in the wake of independence and refers to a very strong sense of nationalism. So, Nargis is not just a mother to her own children, she is mother India, she represents the earth mother. She is what an ideal woman should be like. Now, the construct has been criticized by several uh, film scholars that uh, what we find is that uh, um, development comes at uh, a very great cost in this film, at the cost of great human suffering and misery. So, this is an idea that uh, we have to look at and it is the woman who suffers constantly and therefore, she is idealized. So, those of you who are interested in looking at the representation of woman in um, on Indian screen they have to bear this point in mind. So, the film starred the great Nargis along with uh, Raj Kumar who played her husband and Sunil Dutt and Rajendra Kumar they played her, her sons. Interestingly, the director wanted to cast Dilip Kumar in the double roles of uh, both husband and uh, her son, but then uh, this was ruled out particularly Nargis did not support the idea, mm, the assumption being that the audience would reject this premise or this kind of pairing outright since uh, Dilip Kumar and Nargis had played uh, you know, the lead role, the romantic couple in a number of films such as Jogan and Andaz before that. Andaz again is a very important film to understand the concept of uh, the forces of 
modernity versus traditional um, on Indian screen. Now, um, again as I have been talking about the film Mother India is a tribute to the resilience of the Indian woman and Radha as played by Nargis symbolizes Shakti, the earth mother who is marked or chosen to root out evil and lead us towards salvation and redemption. Okay, at the end, the mother kills, she guns her uh, rebellious son down in order to restore harmony in the village. So, it is duty over, choosing duty over personal happiness and that is the moral of the story. So, the ideal mother character became a template for a screen mother. Consider for instance, uh, the mother figure as played by uh, Nirupara in Diwar and uh, Reema Lagu in Vastav, Mahesh Manjrekar directed and Sanjay Dutt is starring. Mother India was shot in Mehboob studios and also on locations in the villages of Maharashtra, Gujarat and Uttar Pradesh. It is said that for the flood scene, cameraman Faridu Nirani went to Uttar Pradesh that witnessed the great flood in 1959 and shot some footage and this material was later used in the film. Another key point of the film was its music by Noshad and Noshad introduced the um, uh, western kind of symphony here, the western classical music and Hollywood style orchestra to Hindi films. The film as we are all aware of generated high revenue and is considered a cultural classic. We move on to talk about um, one of the most influential directors of all time now. Yes, I am talking about Guru Dutt. Guru Dutt who is credited with making India's most socially conscious films such as Pyasa, Kagas Ke Phool, Bazi, Chaudhvi Ka Chand, and several others. He also is associated with uh, uh, light hearted breezy films such as R Par and Mr. and Mrs. 55. R Par is credited uh, or uh, uh, especially recalled today for the kind of Bambaya language it employed. It was the first of its kind to use a variety of uh, uh, you know the typical Bambaya film, uh, language that we today know and that we came later to associate with actors such as Amitabh Bachchan, Mithun Chakravarti and Govinda, but Guru Das Arpar was the film that started it all. Arpar was also shot uh, to a great extent on locations. Guru Das gave uh, uh, breaks to several important um, artists and uh, one artist that all of us revere and love um, still with us is the great Vahida Rahman who was introduced in the Guru Dutt produced CID, um, a movie he produced and was directed by Raj Khosla, also starring Devanand. Guru Dutt's cinema is particularly remarkable for its, for its extraordinary mise en scene which gelled perfectly with his layered screen plays. Um, like a true author. Now, this here is one director who we can very safely call an author. He is someone who deserves to be called an author, almost like Orson Welles of our country. So, he is an author who collaborated uh, several times with uh, frequently with several artists, music directors, and technicians. His films are immensely watchable for their song picturization. I would like you to watch this particular song star, um, from Jal um, starring Devanand and Geeta Bali. Please note down the link here. Now, um, talking about Guru Das, um, one of the most remarkable and memorable film Pyasa. The film is based on poet Sahir Ludhyanavi's personal experiences. Sahir Ludhyanavi is another great lyricist with whom Guru Dutt often collaborated. Pyasa is a love story between a poet and a prostitute with a heart of gold. So, again uh, consider the template that was uh, first suggested by Devdas and still continues. 
It is also about the struggle between crass commercialism and idealism. Uh, Pyasa is a must watch for most lovers of Hindi films and so is Gurudas most ambitious work of all time which did not do very well when it was first released that is Kagas Ke Phool and uh, which also has the distinction of being India's first cinema, uh, cinema scope film in 70 mm. It is a story and we can detect personal autobiographical touches here, a story of a film director um, who is going through a troubled marriage, his failed marriage and then his romantic relationship with a poor girl who, who he raises into a big star. Soon he starts losing his stronghold and reduced to nothingness, he is reduced to poverty, failure, he uh, suffers a lot and at the end dies ignominiously. So, that is Gurudas take on the film industry and, the, uh, and its fickleness. So, the movie um, of course, did not as we all know did not do too well when it was first released, it was considered way too depressing. Okay, but today it is remembered for its stunning visuals and extraordinary mise en scene. Saha Baby or Golam is another movie produced by uh, Guru Dutt and directed by his frequent collaborator Abrar Alvi. The film starred Guru Dutt, Meena Kumari, Rahman and Wahida Rahman and is based on a Bengali novel set in the pre-independence feudal Bengal. It tells the story of a servant Bhutanath as played by Guru Dutt who narrates the story in flashback. The story concerns Choti Bahu as played by Meena Kumari, who is a neglected wife of an aristocrat as played by Rahman. So, it is all about the decadent feudal Bengal which is uh, uh, coming to an end, you know at the same time you have the Brahma Samaj uh, movement, the forces of liberalism, modernity at the same time. On the other hand, you have the decadent and uh, the morally corrupt values of the aristocrats. So, the film has to be watched for the unique atmosphere of decadence that it created as well as for the representation of Choti Bahu that is Meena Kumari's uh, greatest performance ever and her longing for love and sexual needs. It is a tragic yet fascinating story of downward spiral of uh, a particular class of society as represented by the twin characters of Rahman and Meena Kumari. Although uh, it is a movie that, uh, that, is, that can be appreciated all round for it has first rate acting, it has wonderful music, it has great sets and uh, brilliant cinematography. Yet one thing that stays with you forever is Meena Kumari's performance as Choti Bahu, you have to watch the movie for its representation of uh, women uh, which could uh, which can be seen as uh, quite progressive according to those times in the 50s we are talking about where uh, the director had the courage to um, portray a woman with uh, very you know uh, portray a woman who longs for um, sexual satisfaction okay. and this was something that uh, uh, was very novel, very new to the Indian screen. From movies, let us talk about uh, the musical scene and the 50s are also called the musical golden age of Hindi films. The coming of musically inclined filmmakers such as Guru Dutt, V. Shantaram, Raj Kapoor, um, along with Raj Khosla and Shakti Samant. Okay. Um, it all this ensured not only quality music because these directors had a keen eye for music, but it also led to branding of music and thus camps were formed. Now, camps are like people who uh, regularly work with one another. We are not now necessarily talking about authorism, but are talking about camps where stars and music directors would feel comfortable only with each other or one another and would uh, um, rarely would it happen that they would work with someone outside their comfort zone. 
So, let us um, consider for example, Dilip Kumar's association with Naushad and Mohammad Rafi, Raj Kapoor's well known association with Mukesh and Shankar Jaikishan and uh, uh, Devanand's memorable association with S. D. Burman and Rafi and Kishore Kumar. Some of the greatest music, musical scores of uh, Hindi cinema have been produced during the 50s and these three stars, the great trio of Raj Kapoor, Devanand and Dilip Kumar are at the center of this canon, the great musical age. Of course, we have people like Naushad, Shankar Jaikishan and S. D. Burman also. Wonderful music and um, music critics, musical scholars would regard it, regard it, regard the period as the peak of the musical scene in the history of Hindi cinema. Mughalai Azam 1960 is a period epic directed by K. Asif and it is a magnum opus starring Prithvi Raj Kapoor, Dilip Kumar and Madhubala. Um, interestingly, uh, the film is also remembered today for the longest gestation period for any film. Um, the, the, there were plans to launch this film in 1944 by K. Asif, but it got it, its eventual completion and release only in 1960. The film went terribly over budget largely because of the Shish Mahal sequence and some of you who would be interested in cinematography and means also they should watch this film for the, um, the great song Jab Pyaar Kiya To Dar Na Kiya and uh, the Shish Mahal sequence and which was very difficult for the cinematographer and the director to capture on a screen because of the complicity uh, complexity of uh, uh, the sets. Here is a great scene from Mughal Azam, please watch it and come back to me. So, I welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the scene. We will continue with this lecture in our next class. Thank you.